In this video, I will show you how to solve a limiting reactant problem. So, limiting reactants. Oh, well, a limiting reactant, as its, as its name says it, is a reactant that will be entirely consumed. So, reactant. completely consumed and so if you if you have a limiting reactant you're always going to have a, a the, the other reactant will be in excess so a good way to to know if, if you're solving a, rim, a, a limiting reactant problem if you're dealing with a limiting reactant problem is if they ask you for for an excess element or an excess compound. So let's say you have a reaction that goes like this A, B, plus C, D forms A, D plus B, C. Well, this side represents the reactions and this the products. So one of these two is going to be the, the limiting reactant and the other one is going to be the excess reactant. So basically what you want to do is you want to, to determine the mass of let's say one of the products like so we're going to use AD as our product and you'll be given the mass of AB and the mass of CD. Uh, what you want to do first is to find using the mass of AB using the mass of AB and then the mass of CD you want to find the mass of AD so you will have something like this you have the mass of AB you'll go the process go mass here the moles one more probably and you will go until you have the mass of AD and you will do the same with the mass of CD the same process until you get the mass of AD. Now, these two numbers will be different, which is good. They have to be different. And you have you are going to pick the lowest of these two. So you have to pick of these two the lowest. And what that will give you is the theoretical yield. I will talk more about yields in the in the following video, so don't worry too much about it for now. The, what you have to know is that the lowest mass obtained, the mass of AD, is going to be called theoretical yield. So let's say that. That the ma that this was lower than than this one. So if they w if this one was lower, it means that this is going to be our limiting reactant. So C D would be the limiting reactant. This this what we get here that is not going to be the limiting reactant. That is going to be the theoretical yield. The element the the reactant that we got it from is going to be the limiting reactant. So in this case, MCD will be our limiting reactant. And I will put it as LR and the theoretical yield as TY. So if we have the, the, lim the limiting reactant, it means that we have the excess reactant too. So the mass, so AB would be our excess reactant and what they will ask you how much how much mass there was in excess and you can just you can just say that there was this much mass in excess you actually have to find it and I'll, I'll I'll explain to you how to do that too so we know all of this um, Okay. 
what you want to do is that you will use the mass of the limiting reactant, in this case, MCD. It is our limiting reactant. Let me draw it small here. Just read the remote. And you will find using the same method as before, we we'll use the moles, you use the atomic mass, the molar mass here, like this. And you keep going until you find the mass. You want to find here the mass of the excess reactant. So the mass of A B. And this this mass of A B we get if you think about it, you're using the mass of the limiting reactant. So the mass of the of, of what will finish. And what you're finding is what will be used. So we're gonna write here use. But you want what remains. So you have the mass of, of A B given from the beginning. And now you find the mass of AB that was used. So if you subtract this, mass of AB, I'm going to write here, used. And I'm going to write this one, given. You will have what remains. So you will have what remains. And that is what you're looking for. So now let's use all of this knowledge and actually solve the problem. The problem says that we have 17.82 grams of sodium hydroxide reacting with 15.4 grams of phosphoric acid to get sodium phosphate and water. And what they're asking us is how many grams of, of, of sodium phosphate, which is our product, are formed, then how many grams of excess reactant are left. So what we just learned. So as I told you before, they're asking you for the excess reactant, so that means that we're solving a limiting reactant problem. Now let's write the chemical equation. You have H3PO4, and then you have NaOH, then what is 4 would be Na3PO4, and water. The first thing you have to do whenever you see a chemical reaction, a chemical equation, you have to make sure it is balanced. And this equation isn't balanced. Let's see. We have three sodiums here, three sodiums here. The phosphorus is the same in both sides too. Now let's go with the hydrogen. Three hydrogens here, three hydrogens here, six hydrogens here. And we have here two. So we multiply this by three. So we have three water now. Then we have, we go with the oxygens now. We have four oxygens here, plus three oxygens, seven oxygens. And here we have four, plus three, seven. So this equation is balanced. Now let's go to the limiting reactant problem. So just for you to see it better, this would be your mass of AB, this would be your mass of CD, and this would be your mass of AD. So we're going... The first thing I told you you have to do is using your reactant mass, you will want to find the mass of AD. So let us let me actually write the mass of each. We have fifteen point four grams of this and seventeen point eight grams of sodium hydroxide. So we use our molar conversion knowledge. We start with the 15.4 grams of H3PO4. Okay, and if we find the molar mass of it, it is about 98 grams of H3PO4, and that is one mole. And you want to go from moles of H3PO4 two moles of any 3 po 4 and there is one here and one here so the mole ratio is 1 now we are in any 3 po 4 and we simply use its its molar mass one mole any 3 po 4 and the molar mass 163.94 grams this with this and we get about 25.76
grams of Na3PO4. I'm going to do the same thing, just to not lose time, I'll, I'll pause. So that is exactly the same, just using this, this reactant. And there's a 3 here because of this. And then this only has, it has this is a 1. So we have to, to pick the lowest of them, and in this case it would be this. So that is, let me erase all of this. What I just erased didn't matter anymore. So, those 24.32 grams of, of Na3PO4 will be our theor theoretical yield. So, 24... 24.32 grams. So, as I told you, this is not the limiting reactant, because this is a product. So, what we started with would be our limiting reactant. So, this is a limiting reactant. So now we know that the limiting reactant is NaOH. So we also know that the excess reactant would be H3PO4. And as you may recall, the first question was how much was formed. And how much was formed was simply our theoretical yield. So we have that. Now we want to, to know how much was left. So we will use the, what I told you then, the excess reactant. So to solve this, you will use your limiting reactant first, which is 17.8 grams of NaOH. And do the, do the same process, I'm going to pause it again. So this is what we get. We get 14.54 grams of our our excess reactant or phosphoric acid as you may know it and that is what was used no not what was left and you can you can notice that I didn't use this because we have to find this so make sure that you use the limiting reactant first to find the excess reactant and now we simply use the, the, the formula it was given minus used would be what's left so what was given was 15.4 grams what was used was 14.4.54 grams and what we get left is 0 0.863 grams of phosphoric acid in excess so what was left well when you say something is in excess it means that it wasn't used so that is how you solve a limiting reactant and excess reactant problem i'll be talking more about yields in in the next in the in the following video if you want to know more about theoretical yields actual yields and percentage yields